So I have a receiver. He's a little bit farther down uh, than Christian Watson, and I don't think he should be, but I hope he still is when I, I'm drafting. That's Josh Downs with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so I tweeted this out a little bit uh, a while back. I mean, nothing is just clear cut, but, you know, weeks one through eight, Josh Downs, if you look at him compared to the other rookie wide receivers from that draft class, he was top three in snap share, route share, target share, receiving yards per team pass attempt, uh, weighted opportunity rating, EPA per target, points per game. I could probably go on with a few more things. Top three. So, and again, these, you know, where he ranks amongst the other rookies isn't necessarily like a direct correlation to his success, but that's where he was through the first eight weeks. He then hurt his knee in practice in week nine on Thursday before the game, played through it. And I mean, it is a very distinct drop off from week nine on, um, you know, in, in basically all of his numbers. Didn't help that Anthony Richardson got, also got hurt. That Those two things don't really line up. Richardson got hurt much earlier than, than Josh Downs. Josh Downs' best games last year were not with Anthony Richardson. But, um, you know, with a healthy Anthony Richardson, it's going to help the entire offense. I just think, I mean, he's he's wide receiver 49, keep trade cut. Um, oddly enough, he's wide receiver 50, uh, best ball, and underdog. You know, he's behind guys like Sutton, Jacoby Myers. Uh, who else was he behind? Romeo Dobbs, Jamison Williams, mm-hmm. Mike Williams, Christian mm-hmm. Watson. Um, and I'm I'm likely, I mean, Downs is one of those guys that I hunt for, especially after like a rookie year, where, you know, because of if you look at his season long, he fin- didn't have a great season points per game wise. He doesn't he didn't stand out really amongst the rookies. But if you if you break it down a little bit more, and I mean there's no guarantees just because he but to have a first half that good. And then an injury kind of derail it as a rookie to me was, and he was coming in with the highest target share of the rookie class to begin with. So I really like downs. I've been trying to scoop him up anywhere I can because people, he's just kind of, he's a little bit of an afterthought right now, um, which is indicated by his wide receiver five price. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you so much. I think the injury can't be overstated. Like I wonder if he just didn't play through that injury and just missed a chunk of games, how, what the, the vision would be on him. Like what would the perspective be from the dynasty community? Because when that, ha- when they do like miss the chunk of games, it's much easier for everyone to look at like, well, if you just separate these games and do the per-, per game numbers based on this, it looks really good. But because you actually played through the injury, it made his per game numbers worse. And that's what people look at. Seth, are you also a fan of Josh Downs? Honestly, like at the price, it's hard to complain with what Scott said, but I just think there's a limited upside with Downs, man. Like, almost 600 slot snaps for him. Like, he's going to be a slot receiver. And, like, right now, who've called it out on the IBT Media YouTube channel a couple weeks ago, he was feeling maybe Brock Bowers could actually go to Indianapolis. If that's the case, or if they they bring in uh, another potential tight end similar to Brock Bowers who could play out of the slot, I, I just worry that there's not enough to go around for Josh Downs to be truly impactful for fantasy throw him at the end uh, at the end of some best ball rosters and I'm okay with it but I I don't know I I just can't get over the fact that he is a slot guy only I I appreciate the bear case and I mean I have seen Brock Bowers mock to the Colts a lot of times that could have an effect on Downs Skyler Downs was a player for us who we were really interested in in rookie drafts last year and as we talked about the rookie year was looking really good injury happens how are you feeling now now, I he's a player that I would have liked to have just seen a little bit more from. I do understand the injury, but the opportunity was there, and there were weeks I was just hoping he would step in, and the numbers didn't re- really reflect it. He had four weeks with really meaningful targets, and they weren't with Richardson. You know, obviously, I would have l- liked to have seen a little bit more of that connection, see how it works. I would have liked him to see get a little bit more work outside. And really, my argument against buying him now is exactly what Seth was saying. If you look at the Indianapolis Colts draft picks, they're at pick 15, 46, and 82. I think those are three prime spots. If you want to go in at the top tier wide receiver, the second tier, or kind of that third tier, they have a chance at every level to go in and get another guy into that wide receiver room to replace Alec Pierce and push Josh Downs for targets, who, by the way, only had 17% of the team's targets last year. So my thing is with Josh Downs, if you were buying him right now, I think if he survives the draft, if they don't go in and get a guy who's going to potentially push him out of two wide receiver sets, his price probably stays the same because people are looking at the box scores and they also weren't impressed. So I like Josh Downs, the player, but with the way this offense runs, kind of in the second offense, we want kind of the first read wide receiver in that offense and then the run game. And past that, it's it's really 
it's it's getting a little bit dicey, right? You know, we're not going to pay a premium to anyone past that. Now, I still believe in the player. I, if that offense takes a level up, there could be value there. But I, I don't think I'm going to go and make that investment until I see the draft unfold. And if he survives, I, I think I'll go in and potentially I can get him at the same price now, which is that of like a late second. Scott, I want to give you the opportunity to debate that bear case from Seth. Well, I mean, I, I, I actually, I mean, I agree. I agree with the risks and I agree with the red flags of his situation. Um, and one thing I specified when I kind of found some of this data and presented it was, you know, this isn't me saying like, you know, because of this first half of the season, I think he's, he should go in the top 15, you know, it's, it's to me, it's, it's, he's more, I think, and I don't, I, you know, he doesn't have the same kind of ceiling as someone like Christian Watson does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, they're going to, you know, a running quarterback with Jonathan Taylor at running back. It's not like they're going to be throwing it like the 2022 Buccaneers. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think just, you know, any, I mean, you could argue like, well, if you, if you buy somebody that's ranked as a wide receiver five, as a mid to late wide receiver three, what does that really mean? And it's a valid question. Like, what is that really going to do for your team? Um, but that's kind of more where 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 I'm going with him, not as this like dark horse sleeper that's going to be a top 24 guy. Um, just that I just think he's, I would gladly take him ahead of some of those receivers I named. Um, right. With, with, even with the risks. I mean, you know, I mean, the dra the draft the the draft argument um you know that's that's completely fair especially with the way mock drafts drafts have looked um but you know we're doing all this stuff weeks before the draft so a lot is going to change um but i agree i mean if they if they draft bowers or if they draft another receiver who's not a slot receiver his his price is going to continue to go down so you could even probably get him for cheaper um so i mean i don't i don't disagree um, but I'm still, I'm still taking that risk and trying to buy him now for, for cheap. Scott's loved Josh down since the day he first laid eyes on his college tape. Don't let him fool you. This guy's yeah. been a homer since day one, my friends. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they missed him. They missed, they missed him this year. I mean, when they had, um, when they had Devontae Walker missing a little bit of time and yeah. You know, oh yeah. Downs, I think they definitely missed yeah. him a little bit early on, uh, which gives me a little bit more faith because there's always the narrative. Well, maybe he was elevated by Drake May's play. I think Josh Downs is a good player, but I also thought Elijah Moore was a good player and yeah. they come in and add another yeah. wide receiver. Who's even of that Corey Davis level talent. It could be like when Corey Davis and Garrett Wilson came into town, Elijah Moore just got pushed down. He couldn't get on um, more than 50, 60% of the snaps, you know, by middle of the season. And, down to the player who already could potentially be capped to 70 percent of the snaps that that could really hurt god i miss yeah, they, they very likely could replace <laughs> Gabe davis i mean sorry alec pierce <laughs> <laughs> yes i honestly i think that uh brian thomas would be a fine option for them as oh, well in the first round talk to me love it <laughs> all right but we're here to talk about some qbs so we're going to do that and we're going to start off